freebies for all, right? Hey, come one, come all, why not? As Team Biden confronts sinking poll numbers, a historically low approval rating, these geniuses at the White House have a plan. They have a plan that they've come up with to help regain support from millennials and minorities that Biden is so disappointed. Just forgive their student loan debt. I mean, hey, why not? It's just money after all, right? There's no consequences. And apparently, it's not the student's fault that they can't pay back thousands of dollars that they borrowed. It's actually the system's fault. The system is rigged against them. I'm on it. Plus, new reports, new reports today indicating that the U.S. is considering labeling Russia a state sponsor of terror. In other words, Biden's finally, finally grown a pair. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. We know that can't happen. That aside, all kidding aside, let me just ask you this. If we are about to label Russia a sponsor of terror, which I believe we should, why the heck are we still relying on Russia to negotiate for us with Iran? Why are we negotiating with Iran at all? Iran, who arms the terror organization Hezbollah. Are we trading out one state sponsor of terror for another? We're going to dig into that. And come, come on, Janet Yellen. I mean, it, you used to be kind of a big deal. Like, you're a trained economist. You're head of the Federal Reserve. Well, now, Janet Yellen is turning into uh, kind of Biden's lackey, right, as head of the Treasury. She's in a CYA mode or pass the buck mode. She's blaming Russia entirely for the inflation we now see, which makes no sense at all. I'm setting the record straight on why she's absolutely positively so wrong on this. Meanwhile, Joe Biden is out there telling friends, according to a report that he intends to run again. So it's a little good news for conservatives, right? Joe Biden, after all, is not electable. Did you see him this week with the Easter Bunny? You know, I just asked you yesterday who was running the show. Perhaps now we know. We know the answer. It was the Easter Bunny all along. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Trish Regan Show. It's so good to have you here. Wonderful to have you back. I want to point out that portions of today's program are brought to you by Legacy Precious Metals. There has never been a better time to invest in precious metals than right now. So go to LegacyPMInvestments.com for more to make your investment or gold or silver today. LegacyPMInvestments.com. All right, Joe. You got a plan here, a plan to win back young, low-income Americans who thought you'd be all that, except you're not, you won't, you never will be. The Biden administration just announced that it will make it easier for low-income students, student loan borrowers, to get debt forgiveness. He's about to allow three and a half, 3.6 million people, which is 10% of all student loan borrowers, to receive at least three years of credit towards eventual debt forgiveness. Um, here's the deal. This program is actually not that good for those on the left that actually wanted total debt forgiveness. I mean, maybe it inches people a little bit closer, but I'd argue it's a mishmash of nothing. Typical, typical Biden. No one really comes out ahead in this. It's just a little PR stunt designed to maybe make CNN say a few things because they don't actually understand the plan. But the way the program currently works is you've got 20 to 25 years of payments. If you can't afford the payments, then you're forgiven those loans. Well, now you have three years of forgiveness in there. Perhaps that means the loan is forgiven ultimately earlier. Bottom line, it's not a solution. No matter how the media tries to package it, and as someone who did pay off her entire college debt, of which she had plenty, and worked her way through school, I would only point to this. We have created an education system that is a lot like the great industrial military complex that the left used to like to complain about. Remember back in the 80s? Well, you see, we now have the great educational woke complex that is spitting out kids that can't earn a living, can't pay their bills, have been indoctrinated with a whole bunch of woke nonsense, and really are not contributing to society in ways that we need. So the real answer is to take all the government funding out of the universities, out of these student loan programs, and actually try and lower tuition costs that way by having a real market come to work. I understand the intentions were honorable. I love the idea of everybody being able to get an education. We need to keep that. Everybody deserves equal access to education. However, at some point when you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, as you are with college student loan programs, then 
you don't want to be giving uh, the incentive to the colleges to raise tuition even more. But you've given these kids blank checks, so what does it matter, right? You just print more money. You print more money until it all comes due, which is what these kids are finding out. Not to mention, I mean, hey, like not everybody necessarily needs to go to college or should go to college. And there's plenty of other wonderful things that you can do to earn a living. Why don't we focus more on that? We don't because the educational woke complex, this massive educational woke complex has their agenda and their agenda is getting as much money as possible for these universities. And it's our kids that are paying the price. You know, it is entirely irresponsible of our government. And I'll tell you this latest move by Joe Biden it's not the answer. Okay, turning to another story that is developing today, we have just learned that the Biden administration is considering labeling Russia a terrorist state. And that would be a, a big deal. And uh, I think it's something that we need to do, given what we are seeing there in Ukraine. But here's just a question for you in terms of consistency. Why is it that the administration is willing to allow Russia to continue negotiating for us? with Iran. You know, no one's calling Biden out on this. In fact, you see members of the mainstream media advocating for Moscow to still have a role in negotiations. It's unbelievable. In fact, let me, let me share this with you. Direct quote from um, the left-leaning Business Insider publication, it's a website. Today they wrote, Moscow's anc ancillary role in the deal is a small price to pay to ensure that Iran does not get a nuclear weapon. So that's, that's, that's the, I, I mean, look, I'm sorry. Moscow gets a seat at the table while massacring innocents in Ukraine? I don't think so. I mean, and, and why do we trust Iran? Why do we trust Iran to say that they're not going to get a nuclear weapon and they're going to be our friend? The priorities of this administration are entirely misaligned. And I suspect it's because you have a whole bunch of fiefdoms there. You don't have one person running the show. You get a whole bunch of little groups controlling this, controlling that. Consequently, no one's really in charge because if there were, then that person in charge would say, wait a second, I'm looking at sanctioning Russia. I'm about to call Russia a state sponsor of terror. Therefore, I am not gonna allow Russia to negotiate on behalf of my country with Iran, right? That's just what makes sense. I think this administration has its priorities really messed up. But you know what? One organization that has its priorities totally right and is out there fighting for you and me and everyday Americans and our values every single day in Washington, D.C. and around the country is the Association of Mature American Citizens, also known as AMAC. It's a, a group of more than two million members and they are advocating for freedom, for faith, for family, for values that I know are really, really important to you. They're also trying to guard against all this inflation. They don't want Joe Biden just spending more and more money, you know, forgiving student loan debts uh, at the expense of an older generation. There has to be some balance here, and that's what they're looking for. The Association of Mature American Citizens. I encourage you to join the group. It's just 16 bucks a year, and I'll tell you, you'll make that back um, and then some because they have all kinds of great discounts, restaurants, travel, all that kind of stuff. Um, so check it out. Cell phone plans, amac.us slash Regan, my last name, R-E-G-A-N, amac.us slash Regan, R-E-G-A-N. You can also renew your membership there as well. All right, turning right now to the administration's favorite talking point, it's Russia's fault. <laughs> it's, it's all Russia's fault. All right, Janet Yellen came uh, out with a speech today at the annual IMF meeting, and she said on the world stage, and I quote, price and supply shocks, are already materializing, adding to global inflationary pressures, creating risks to external balances and undermining the recovery from the pandemic. I want to be clear, Russia's actions are responsible for this. <laughs> are you kidding me? 
I mean, look, I mean, yes, Russia is going to be a huge problem economically in the future. We're already seeing, of course, uh, the, the influence on Russian nat gas and oil coming off the market in terms of oil prices having moved higher. But let me tell you, I haven't seen nothing yet, right? I've predicted a buck thirty, hundred and thirty dollars that we might be seeing uh, in, in terms of oil prices per, per barrel. And I think you could see $9 at the gas pump. So in other words, it hasn't even really happened yet. We've just had a few weeks of dealing with the price increases and pressure from Russia. Everything that we've got, that 8.5% increase in inflation, the highest in, what, 40 years? The increase in wholesale prices, highest ever? That's all on Joe. Well, and Jerome. Okay, so, so this administration, this Federal Reserve, they are responsible for it because they think the answer is just print more money. It's never the answer. I have told you from the beginning since, well, the second COVID stimulus check that we were running the risk of real danger because you had simultaneously the federal government in terms of the White House and the Federal Reserve in terms of Jerome Powell coming out, printing money together. And there's a danger in that, right? You can only handle it for so long before the economy really starts to get into treacherous territory. I want to point out something that was actually in the Wall Street Journal today, and I quote a piece by John Hilsenrath, during the past 80 years, the Fed has never lowered inflation as much as it is setting out to do now by four percentage points without causing recession, right? Recession, this is what I've been talking about for months, is very much a possibility. And yes, Russia may have something to do with that in the future, but for her to stand up there and say that right now is completely disingenuous and is all about a political narrative because they've got midterms coming up and they know it's not good and they know the poll numbers are bad. But you know what? Policies have consequences. And I think the country got too sort of used to the idea that we could have no inflation for so long. Well, guess what? Now, guys, you got it. You got it big time. And I'm not sure the Fed is going to be able to fix this one. When they do, it will mean most likely recession. Okay, turning now to, um, well, <laughs> the Easter Bunny, because I hope the Easter Bunny has this all under control. I don't know if you saw this, but on Monday, Easter Monday, the Easter Bunny was out there with President Biden um, in the egg rolling ceremony. And at some point, Biden started to wander off, as he quite often does these days, right? How, how many videos have I now, now showed you? At least a couple, right, in the last week or so, uh, where he seems to r wander off and not quite know what to do with himself. Well, that sort of moment was happening again, and there were reporters around, and they, they started asking, you know, questions on the international front. Well, what do you know? The Easter Bunny darted right up, <laughs> came out, corralled Biden, brought him back to where he was supposed to be. So, um, <laughs> I, I, I just hope, I hope the Easter Bunny really has it under control. We've been asking who's running the show, right? You know, I, I guess now we know. It, it's just that little bunny. Um, I, I want to leave my conservative audience with some good news. According to reports, Joe Biden is telling people that he wants to run again. Um, I think that's probably pretty good news because I think Joe Biden is pretty darn beatable. I mean, I wish it wasn't that way. Because as a patriot, I want nothing more than our country to do well, for our economy to do well, for Americans to succeed. But um, politically speaking, I don't see how this goes on another four years. <laughs> go to my trishintel.com website for a whole lot more news and information. Go check out our store with all our freedom apparel at trishregan.store. Make sure you sign up for my locals platform, trishregan.locals.com. And if you haven't subscribed to this podcast or to this channel, please do that right now. I'll see you back here tomorrow.